So this topic comes up, um, and so I want to talk a little bit about it. I certainly cannot do functional programming justice in like a few minutes. Um, but what I want to do is I want to sort of uh, point out the fact that Java is not a functional language and then talk about a little bit what that means. So one thing you've noticed in Java is in Java, pretty much everything except for those eight primitive types is an object. Um, Java, uh, Java is an object-oriented programming language. Uh, Java, working with Java essentially consists of you know, creating objects, calling their methods, passing, you know, data to those methods, whatever, uh, manipulating the state that objects contain, etc. There are other ways of building computer programs, uh, and some of them are really cool. Um, functional programming is, uh, there are purely functional languages that require you to program this way, and then there's also sort of a style of functional programming. But what functional programming is really is, it's a style of programming that focuses more on writing functions, um, methods uh, that we've talked about, and having those methods do the work and manipulate information. Um, one of the features of functional languages, um, given how central functions are in the language, you know, think about Java objects, right? Like in Java, everything's an object, so I can pass an object to a method reference, right? In functional programming, uh, the functions, the methods, take center stage. And what that means is that functional languages typically have support for, I shouldn't say typically, almost always, always have support for what are called first class functions. So in a functional programming language, a function is a value that can be stored in a variable. It's a value that can be passed to another function and it can be returned from a function. So you can have functions that take functions as arguments and then return another function. You can have a variable that stores a function. In Java, we can't do this. In Java, our variables can store you know, values of the primitive types or object references. That's it. There is no, uh, Java does not support so-called first class functions. However, what we're going to look at in today's lesson is as close as we can get by combining together some existing features of Java and also um, exploiting some new syntax. But you know, some of you will go on now. You know, this, this, this. Um, you know, what does your future in programming and computer science look like? I don't know. But here's one thing I do know: you're not going to go through your whole life just writing Java code. If you do, that wouldn't be very interesting. There's many different programming languages out there. You learn one first. Some of you are, were completely brand new beginners a couple of months ago and you've come a long way. Um, but you keep going. And one of the things that learning other languages does is it kind of like, you know, sometimes you think, oh, I have to do this this way because it's Java. And then you learn another language you're like, no, 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 there's other ways to do things. It really opens your mind, right? Um, it's sort of like learning another human language and suddenly you can read all this literature and you learn different patterns of thought. I mean, learning other languages, human languages, actually changes your brain. Um, learning other programming languages, I'm sure, does something similar. Um, so, you know, the Wikipedia article has a little bit of a description of, of things, you know, functions are treated as first class citizens. I was just talking about that. Um, one of the things that's cool over here on the right is that you look at this programming paradigm um, and, and look at all this, right? There are so many different styles of, I don't even know what some of these are, right? Uh, so many different styles of programming. You know, Java falls into, let's see, uh, where is it? Um, I saw it a minute ago, here we go. Um, the, uh, the, the object oriented uh, camp. Uh, there's also uh, languages that are more procedural in nature. Um, but there are all these really interesting uh, different choices in the design space of programming languages. Some of these uh, paradigms are much, much more well uh, populated by languages than others. So some of these, you know, like uh, array oriented computing, right? Um, it looks like there are some languages here like APL, MATLAB, Analytica, Fortran. APL is a really interesting language um, that support this. But some of these like, you know, functional, for example, um, Lisp, Scheme, Clojure, uh, Racket, uh, Erlang, OCaml, Haskell, F Sharp. Um, these are all languages that have pretty solid communities behind them. In fact, I know Haskell and OCaml are actually taught here at Illinois, a little bit farther on in the program. Um, so anyway, all to say that, you know, you are, I just want you to be aware of the fact that you're learning one style of programming. Uh, there are other ways of writing computer programs and solving problems with computers and different styles of approaching things. Um, the language you choose will do a better or worse job at supporting particular language patterns. Java does not do a great job at supporting functional language patterns, but today we're gonna kind of see as close as we can get to writing uh, code that would be considered more functional in Java.